Good morning. My name is John Louie. I'm with the Nevada Seismological Laboratory, and I'm going to tell you about spatial statistics of densely measured seismic velocity variations. My co-authors are geophysics undergraduate Alex Simpson, PhD student Michelle Dunn, and MS student Eric Eckert. We start with a 60 kilometer long uh, series of uh, 200 surface wave measurements of shear velocity down to depths of about uh, 100 meters. But we're going to look uh, just at the time average shear wave velocity from the surface to 30 meters depth first. I'll call that VS30. This is the July 2003 San Gabriel Valley in Los Angeles uh, refraction microtremor transect. It consists of 200 uh, and more refraction microtremor arrays spaced at 300 meters. And uh, Wes Thelen published these in uh, BSSA in 2006. It was supported by the USGS by, uh, and also by Iris Pascal. And it uh, followed the, link, the uh, route of the San Gabriel River uh, from the mountains at the uh, BC Neherp uh, boundary class uh, as mapped by Chris Wills uh, down to um, uh, through the uh, CD boundary class and along the D boundary, the D uh, class uh, into the DE boundary class in Alamitos Bay uh, at Seal Beach. Now from the uh, mountains on the left to the uh, beach on the right, uh, there's uh, at least 10% uh, uh, VS30 variability in the purple dots. Uh, which are the uh, uh, array measurements on the, uh, on the engineered uh, levee at the edge of the river. And, uh, but it correlates pretty well with other locations uh, uh, away from the river. Uh, and then uh, there are some locations where the velocities are a bit lower. Um, and, and it's about the same story when comparing the VS30s from our um, transect results uh, versus the, uh, uh, the uh, VS30 values summarized from Ross Ryan uh, boreholes, which are the uh, bright red uh, stars. Now, if we uh, take that uh, uh, spatial variation uh, along the transect horizontally over 60 kilometers, uh, and we take its, uh, its uh, spatial spectra, uh, we get a, um, uh, a blue line here in this log-log plot, uh, which about follows a fractal uh, distribution, uh, which is a straight line. And the slope of that straight line defines the uh, fractal dimension uh, in the log-log uh, plot. And the fractal dimension of the uh, San Gabriel River transect VS30 values is, is 1.70. Now, if we take the 400 meter deep Ross Rhine Downey log, which is uh, the blue line on the left, and we take its spatial, spatial spectra, spectrum and plot it uh, on the same uh, plot, you can see that it uh, uh, connects to um, uh, and uh, follows pretty much the same fractal line. Both of them deviate from that line at their noise floor, which is the epistemic variance, uh, you know, due to uncertainty in the analysis uh, and the, the ways recorded in the field, um, that uh, is reached at about uh, 700 meters separation for the transect values and at about uh, two and a half meters, uh, in this case, vertical separation for the Ross Rhine logs. So um, we get the same uh, um, fractal dimension out of uh, both of these, which is, uh, I found, uh, quite remarkable. Uh, and that, that fractal dimension represents the, uh, uh, the aleatory uh, variation of velocity in the ground. Now, we get pretty much the same story if we um, uh, compare uh, the San Gilbert River transect, 60 kilometers long in dark blue on the left with the um, uh, the Las Vegas transect only 15 kilometers long and also the 15 kilometer long transect through Reno. 
in green on the, in the left plot. And um, uh, the fractal dimension from, from Reno is uh, quite a bit uh, larger. Um, it has more uh, high, high spatial frequency uh, variance. And um, at, uh, uh, from, the, from Las Vegas, it's a bit smoother profile, um, strange to say. Uh, and it has a lower fractal dimension, 1.47. So the Los Angeles results uh, at uh, uh, 1.7 brac are bracketed by the Las Vegas at 1.5 and the Reno at 1.8 fractal dimension. So now let's turn our, our um, attention to a really dense data set of um, shear wave measurements of, of shear wave velocity. Um, or surface wave measurements of shear wave velocity. Uh, that's the uh, Clark County and Henderson seismic parcel map. And uh, basically it's uh, these uh, values measured between uh, uh, 2007 and, and uh, 2010 um, define a, um, a, 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 an urban seismic class map that the county uses for uh, issuing building permits. Uh, and uh, Asha Pancha published this in BSSA in 2017. So there are, uh, uh, in, in the area we're looking at here in Las Vegas Valley, there are about uh, uh, 9,500 uh, measurements at, um, uh, uh, at a, an average spacing of uh, 300 meters, at least within the 1,500 uh, square kilometers that uh, the map uh, sampled. Uh, and you can see here uh, that, um, you know, even aside from the complications of the class of classification map, the uh, velocity map uh, here, velocities, you know, high velocities are keyed to warm colors and, and low velocities to cool colors. Uh, the, the, uh, the velocity map is extremely complex. There are some deter deterministic features like the, the distal edges of alluvial fans. Um, Perhaps the uh, uh, the uh, Frenchman Mountain Fault uh, over here, and um, uh, but there's a lot of variation um, at all at a, at a range of scales, uh, even apart from that. So uh, some simple statistics: um, uh, there are really uh, two different um, uh, bimodal. There's a bimodal distribution of these velocities. There either a higher velocity on a caliche cemented soil on, a, on an alluvial fan or a, a from the pluvial lake bed in the center of Las Vegas Valley where there are lower values on average. So um, uh, let's take a look at the, um, uh, at a moving window um, slowness standard deviation map, which is on the right. Uh, we've got the original velocity map on the left and you can see we had to fill in areas where we didn't have parcel map measurements with assumed values. And the boundaries between those areas have uh, this sort of stair-step appearance. So that is quite prominent on the, uh, the standard deviation map. Uh, but uh, within the area of the parcel map measurements, uh, there is some correlation. Uh, there's a, um, you know, 30% and more um, standard deviation uh, of VS30 uh, a, a little bit along the Eglinton Fault, which is very uh, thought to be quite active, and also along the maybe the perhaps less active Frenchman Mountain Fault. The other sort of uh, just kilometer-wide strips of 30% um, uh, of, of changes, most of them you can associate with these distal fan edges and the, trans the stratigraphic transition to um, uh, more, um, uh, you know, playa or uh, lake sediments. Um, although there are some other areas which are quite confusing, um, such as the area around uh, Lake Las Vegas, where there are, uh, you know, 30% uh, uh, standard deviation is just the norm. Now, of course, we can calculate a fractal dimension. Uh, we can get, um, you know, east, west, and north, south, uh, spatial power spectra going across the, uh, the map and um, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the parcel map itself, the velocity values, 
And we get a fractal dimension, which is pretty familiar now, of uh, 1.66, okay, no matter which way we slice it. Um, so uh, what gets really interesting is when we project earthquake shaking in a scenario through this, we use the same uh, modeling procedure as um, uh, Brady Flincham did in 2004 uh, in his uh, BSSA article about um, the um, uh, about the uh, Little Skull Mountain uh, rupture uh, and its waves propagating into uh, Las Vegas. Uh, so then we project a, uh, a local earthquake, but still outside of the basin on the Black Hills Fault. Uh, and so it's, uh, uh, some of its surface waves from the Black Hills rupture channel uh, from the uh, southeast into uh, Las Vegas Valley and its basin and form, as, as you can see hints of here, a rather complex um, uh, peak ground velocity map. All right, so just using that peak ground velocity map, we can expect uh, its fractal dimension as well, which is uh, what Will Saverin did in uh, 2012 for a regional meeting. Um, and so where the parcel map has a uh, fractal dimension, um, you know, analyzed again from uh, spatial spectra, um, it's got a fractal dimension of 1.66. We get a, 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 a fair lower uh, value for fractal dimension, 1.13, uh, from the uh, resulting scenario PGV map. All right, so the waves are acting as a low pass filter and kind of averaging across the geotechnical VS30 map, taking out some of that uh, very short wavelength uh, variation. Um, so uh, uh, let's look at another scenario, this time uh, for an earthquake uh, within the, uh, the basin on the Frenchman Mountain Fault. Uh, that, that scenario, again, we have the, the same 1.66 fractal dimension uh, from the uh, VS30 map itself, uh, and now a 1.38 fractal dimension on the uh, resulting uh, scenario PGV. So, Perhaps uh, when we're rupturing inside the basin, uh, the surface waves, you know, not having to channel into the basin from another one, are retaining some of their complexity. Okay, so I have uh, several conclusions from all of this. Um, the spatial spectra of closely spaced VS30 measurements show fractal aleatory VS variations in the ground at all scales. Given that, uh, these uh, shallow shear velocity variations scatter and amplify or deamplify damaging surface waves at all wavelengths, at all length scales. So if we want to take shaking predictions above two hertz uh, frequencies, uh, and those are the frequencies of uh, most of engineering interest, we really have to measure shear velocity at intervals of 100 meters or shorter. All right, so this is the song I'm singing now. This is a job for distributed acoustic sensing on infrastructure optical fiber, all right? And so that's my suggestion of how to get the intense amounts of data that we're going to need to be able to predict uh, shaking better uh, given the fractal distribution of shear velocities in the, in the ground. Thank you very much for your attention.